Hi, I welcome everybody to the Rock Vapor Classic part number five today. Um, we are doing our first meshing with Snappy Hex Mesh and more precisely using the castellated mesh um, part of Snappy Hex Mesh. I spent almost 10 hours for this video as Snappy Hex Mesh and explaining everything is a hard topic, um, but I tried to run through this training video within 20 minutes. Therefore, let's just start. The first one you should know is Snappy Hex Mesh works within uh, three steps. You can imagine Snappy Hex Mesh is divided with, into three sub algorithms and as you can see here on the top we just investigate into the castellated part today it's the first thing castellated part is you have your uniform background mesh which we created the last time here using salome um uh, just to recall uh, we change this background mesh into an open foam mesh using the ideas UNV to foam application. So we get these files and we also created the system folder and put in there the snappy hex mesh stick with all these files which are required for executing snappy hex mesh. And this was like the state of the last video. And now we are going on using snappy hex mesh for the mesh generation with the first algorithm part of the application castellated and as already tried to, to to tell you the castellated mesh is nothing else than you have your background mesh and then the algorithm is checking okay within this background mesh you have this geometry you want to, to mesh and the algorithm is not is doing nothing more than going through all these cells and checking if there is an intersection with the surface and if there is an intersection did the user specify if i have to refine it or not that's all even though there are some things you should know and be aware of Okay, as already mentioned, Snappy Hex Mesh has three parts and we are just checking out the first one, the castellated part. Okay, this is very good to know at the beginning. And now we are going through, through the, the whole control file of Snappy Hex Mesh, so the Snappy Hex Mesh dict just to give you an idea what is inside there. And actually nothing, yeah, it's not too overwhelming. Snappy, the dictionary, so the control file is split into five sub dictionaries, like the part five we have today. The first sub, or the first dictionary inside here, it's not a sub dictionary because it's a dictionary, is geometry. The geometry includes all object you want to mesh so or let's say all the geometry representative things so we do have here a tree surface a, a triangulated surface and then we have which is the type and then we have the name of the file in our case it's combined.stl and we will name this smoking 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 pipe however this is like an own created surface right because we created in salome or in, in another cad software but open uh, open foam not open foam snappy hex mesh allows you to create a geometry out of the box but this is just primitive objects like a cylinder or a sphere or a box or a cone and you do it within the same specification you have a name the object name actually 
Then this is not a tree surface mesh, it's a searchable box for example, but there are a lot of other op options, just search in the World Wide Web. And then you define like the box with the minimum point, the maximum point, and then you span a box. Okay, just for you, for summary, Geometry has um, two options, in my opinion. Own Geometry representation with a triangulated surface or like the primitives you can create here. But who is investigating into primitives nowadays? I think uh, no one or not most of the people. But these primitives are very good to have in mind because they can be used for interesting meshing refinement strategies. Okay, this was the first thing. The first um, dictionary geometry. Now it is followed by the castellate mesh control. Everything what is inside there is just controlling the castellated part of snappy hex mesh. So it's just controlling the algorithm number one of snappy. After that we have the snap controls which is just controlling the second part of snappy hex mesh. So the snapping algorithm and at uh, third we have the add layer controls and all the parameters inside there just control the add layer algorithm. However at the end we have uh, the mesh quality controls which um, snappy hex mesh incorporates during mesh generation and then we have a right flex, which is which is not uh, really interesting for you, and the merge tolerance. So out of the box, you see there is no big secret in. Okay. Castellated mesh controls. We are just um, as we are just making the castellated part of 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 our geometry. We are going through these functions or keywords and what do they do within this uh, setup or what will they represent. Max local cells. So the first thing you have to know there are a lot of comments which you can read through and probably you will then know what it is used for. So imagine you have your background mesh and then you divide it because you will divide it with four five processors or cores because you want to make a faster re uh, refinement or using snappy x machine for parallel because you're faster then uh, um, this max location local cells is to be interpreted as follows imagine you have background mesh and you split it within into five parts and then your stl or geometry is just located within the last two processors. So if you are refining, the first three are doing nothing and the, the, the fourth and fifth, they having all this load and uh, yeah, calculation stuff to do. So while refining, you get more cells, which is clear. And then if the the local cells on one processor is like in over 100,000 you make a balancing so you, I am not sure how it works actually but it will then change the the cell amount and redistribute it for a balancing stuff and the balancing is controlled with max load unbalancing. This might be also a different thing because I'm not working with this balancing stuff too much. So if you are more interested in these things, leave a comment below and the people who knows exactly what's going on there, they can make um, give an idea about the things which are behind the code. However, max global cells is very obvious. You are having a background mesh of let's say 50,000 cells and then you are um, meshing your geometry and the cells increase increase to 1 million, 1.5 million and then you go to 
1.9 million and the next refinement level goes to 1.2.2 uh, million then snappy hex mesh stops as these maximum global cells are yeah are what exceeded right so this is giving you like an, uh, the option if you have memory problems that if you limit because sometimes you are making some settings and you are not aware okay will it fit to the geometry will it not fit but then you can say with this setting okay two million cells not more and you are fine with your hardware okay the min refinement cells, which is very good to know what it is doing actually. The, you can, in, in, in more complex geometries, um, it is sometimes you go through, yeah, how, how should I say? The refinement, this castellated mesh process is like splitting a cell where it is intersected by the surface and the splitting is done by the user input. So if I decide, okay, it has to be split by one level or two levels or something like this. But sometimes it occurs that you are refining based on, a, on an angle and then you refine one cell and the other cell is not within an angle, which has to be then taken into account for refinement. So you refine just one cell. However, based on this one cell refinement, you get this new cell to be in the valid range of this angle and then this gets refined. And you can have like an iterative process along such um, surfaces. And if this occurred probably at the end of all refinement stuff, you can say, okay, wait, well, Snappy, after you have just 1000 cells left to refine please stop sometimes you can really go into such a loop that snappy hex mesh makes 100 refinements 200 refinements which is fine if you are dealing with very small geometries but imagine you have almost 40 million cells and one refinement stuff takes i don't know one minute then it is different if you have uh, 20 iterations and after these 20 iterations you will just refine these 1000 for 200 it more iterations um, or you just say stop max unbalanced uh, load unbalance already said and the end cells between levels is very important in my opinion most people keep it at three but it gives you a very interesting um, uh, work or feature I would say so if you refine you have an intersection of one cell snappy hex mesh is refining the cell if you specify to refine it and if you have n cells between levels snappy also refines the next and the next and the next so three times if you say four it will take four cells if you say five, it will take five cells. So you can have like a more, uh, so the, the, the area between the different levels can be made more wider, which will sometimes help in, in the meshing process, especially while you are using um, Snappy also the snapping algorithm the next thing is features features are just edges which represent commonly features like if you have an, a curved um, 90 degree circle and you can extract this feature and you can say snappy hex mesh please refine this feature so then each cell which is intersected by this feature gets in this example refined by level six which means one cell the line goes through we refine it then the line goes through this cell we refine it here we have then here level two 
and then it goes through another we get the smaller refinement the not smaller 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 however for this feature refinement sometimes the features you have to inspect your features first please do that make sure the features are good enough and i have a tutorial on my website please also take this tutorial because you should also in my opinion you should always use levels here but as we don't use this feature features feature here we just remove it okay refinement surfaces which is easy to understand we have a surface and we specify how has snappy hex mesh to handle this surface in the snap in the castellated mesh process so we'd say here first the surface is a smoking pipe so smoking pipe is the object we defined here at the top smoking pipe right and then we say level which will give snappy hex mesh the hint please refine each intersection by a level of one now using this one one would mean snappy hex mesh is checking the mesh and the intersection between the background mesh and the surface and all cells which getting intersected will get refined by eight new ones so one hexadron will get eight new hexadron if you say two two snappy hex mesh will first make all the intersection for one level one and then you have a refined mesh and then it checks through which cell is the next um, refinement going through and then you will get a second refinement level and here we have the possibility to say patch info for example patch type wall or um, it's empty or it's a patch for inlet outlet um, okay and then we have this resolve feature angle which I said previously you have the possibility to um, say okay please snappy check some feet some angles between the, the cell and the surface and if this angle is within this angle please refine however this works only if the second number here is on a higher level so the first number is the minimum refinement and the second number is the maximum refinement now it would mean snappy hex mesh check all the surface and refine all the intersected cells by a level of two and then check the surface based on this resolve feature angle and then if it's within or not refine it until level three if you say level five it will check the angle of all these um, cells and if from from based on the minimum uh, refinement so level two if there is a cell within this criteria it's get refined by a level of three then if there within this new refinement is something which is also again within this angle it's get refined by four and then again by five i hope this was more or less clear for you okay this was like surfaces refinement and now we are region refinements just imagine we have our smoking pipe which is a closed volume inside you can say please refine everything within this volume by a level of four for example so you can say smoking pipe level of four and the mode is inside we have different options so imagine the smoking pipe is closed we can say please snappy refine everything inside the smoking pipe which is mode inside or refine all cells which are outside by level of four which would be if we don't take care of the internal flow of the smoking pipe because we are interested how is the air flowing around the smoking 
pipe, like um, uh, and calculating the drag coefficient, for example. Um, and the third option, which is highly powerful, is distance. So we have inside, outside and distance, as also explained here. And for inside and outside, the first number here does not mean anything. You can name it always to zero or to a number you would like. However, there has to be a number. It's like um, a placeholder. While if you have distance, this would mean you have your surface and then from this surface you have like distance of two meters, refine it with level five, then you have a distance of four meters, refine everything by a level of two, and you have 10 meters, refine everything by one, for example. And this would then look like this. We have one meter, refine it by three. We have everything which is from a distance of two meters. We refine, oh, it's, it's five here, yes, um, by four. And then everything which is more than 10 meters away, we find please by a level of, of two. So just for you as, as an idea. Okay, so we will not use this at all out of the box or right away. And then we have location and mesh, which is important. We have our, um, yeah, we have our background mesh, right? And from this background mesh, we, we have our smoking pipe inside. And now you have to specify the location in mesh. So you can put this point into the pipe, then everything outside the pipe will be cut off and we will get the mesh inside the pipe or you put it outside and then only the mesh is kept from the outside. So the in, inside part is cut out. And the allow freestanding face zones. This is a thing um, I, I like to, to turn it off. It depends what I'm doing. Allow freestanding face zones. Um, actually, if you are using cell zones and face zones, I am turning it on. If I have only a single zone, I'm turning it off. It's uh, there, There's uh, more behind, but uh, um, yeah. So far, so good. So doing so, we set to snappy hex mesh, refine the whole smoking pipe by a factor of 2, 2. And we will check what it will do now. The only thing we have to take care is that the, is uh, actually the location in mesh. So what we do is we make check mesh. And our geometry is from this part to this part. So what we are doing is we set our location in mesh to the origin and we start snappy hex mesh. So now snappy hex mesh, um, I guess this is a good thing we, we have now, gives now an error message and Layer sickness is a problem. So something is uh, bad with the layer generation. And this is actually, Snappy makes some pre, yeah, pre-tests. Even though we said we are not interested in layer generation, Snappy Hex Mesh checks um, these surfaces which will be used for layer generation and if these surfaces are not within the STL file or your geometry it will give an error hence you just remove here the layers so this is or you can just can make a command it and then this error message is out of the is is removed <laughs> however now we get a new message which uh, gives us the information the point the origin point is not inside the mesh or on a face or edge of our background mesh which is terrible and this is actually 
the set direction um, which we will set to 0. Point minus 0. Point minus 0. Point 0. 8 for example uh, was it 8 it was 0 8 and now I remember because it is uh, shifted to to the minus set direction so now if you are running snappy hex mesh everything works and if you are more interested you can read through it so it's always good to know what is going on here and you can just see that um, things uh, you we make like um, surface refinement region refinement and then you will get a new folder after snappy hex mesh is uh, finished and this new folder is zero uh, one because in the control dict it is written that we are writing the delta t is one and that's why we get a new time folder one I make a mkdir a time folder zero and I will also um, load now our mesh and I don't skip oh it's already out here I, I told you not to skip it why so okay so this is our background mesh from the time folder zero because the zero time folder will go to constant poly mesh and our new I didn't show it but our our new um, time folder one contains a new poly mesh which now contains all information of the castellated mesh so if there is no poly mesh in a time folder such as we have in zero Paraview will take the mesh from the poly mesh and if there is uh, from the constant poly mesh so from the constant folder and if there is a new poly mesh folder in the time directory Paraview will take this one okay so so this is our geometry I will just load um, our STL file which is this one and now I go on here we say give me the edges and now we go on and click here to the next time one which will load our created mesh so then it looks like this and the first thing you see here some crappiness you can remove this by clicking on this dot foam and you here you have these decomposed polyhedrals and if you do so you get um, things uh, more clean because we introduced polygons and these polygons get decomposed here which gets then these uh, crazy triangles here everywhere so um, people are always complaining my mesh looks so weird what can I do okay as you can see we have now the problem that we cut out our our pipe and actually we want the other mesh and this is actually the problem because we set um, the location point wrongly so what I do is I just create here a point source which is located at yeah so that's too far away so this point here I just check out where I have to locate this point in order to get our mesh properly so one is, the, is much better so I will close it we go back to snappy hex mesh we change our point here and what we do we remove our time folder one and then we yeah make 
or call the application again. We execute it and everything is already done. We open Paraview, we check everything and here we are. We have our first mesh with snappy hex mesh. So here probably we want to refine it um, more and yeah, looks not too bad right now, even though you can here make refinements and yeah. So out of the box, as you could see, I will create a second castellated mesh because we have a lot of more options I want to present. As you see, we have here created our smoking pipe and we have right out of the box, we have only access to this object smoking pipe, which includes all, all the surfaces. So we cannot say, please refine the inlet more or don't refine the outlet or something like this. I hope you, you got what I say. Um, the last thing I want to present is the difference between if you change these numbers here. We will keep it at uh, 2 and 4 now and we have this uh, resolve feature angle. So we remove one again and then we say snappy hex mesh. So what is this now doing actually? We refine the whole surface by a level of two and um, I did not show you what level of two means, but I will check, uh, show it you now. And in addition, we said if there is an angle we specified with this uh, resolve feature angle um, between the cell and the surface, please refine it more. And you saw the the application took all already a bit longer and um, our cells is now 150,000 cells we have and when we, we check it out now we can directly see that here something happened so we get a, a, a better refinement on curved surfaces where we have like this uh, face angle or no resolve feature angle um, condition and you can see here that it is refining a few things and now this is actually a good good example you can see that it is refined here a few, a few, a few cells are refined however these cells are not refined so what the fuck is snappy hex mesh doing? Why, why is just snapping or, or meshing a few of these, even though I think that the, the, the feature angle is everywhere the same, so it should refine everything. So, and now we can just go up, 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 and we have, here 15 cells we stopping refinement since too few cells selected so here we have four cells which needs to be refined but we told snappy hex mesh that we want after this 1000 so if you have to refine less than 1000 don't refine anymore that's why it is aborted there and i hope i don't give you a, a wrong information so let's check it again so we have here four cells and previously we had 980 cells so here it was already already stopping and before this we had 7850 95 cells so within shell refinement between one and two we went into this limit below 1000 and then it was stopping and now if we are rerunning snappy hex mesh we get these cells 
refined, 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 and Snappy Hexmesh is making much more iterations now just to refine these few cells which are within the these limits of this feature angle validity. And I hope that things are working now as expected. Here we have no cells to refine, here four, four cells to refine. So this step surface iteration 8 is done already. Um, and we have here then zero cells to refine. That's why Snappy says, okay, we stop here and Again, you see we have now 35 iteration uh, seconds. And now if we check our mesh, okay, I was wrong. So here this angle is somehow not valid. So we get just this refinement. However, we have a few cells more that gets refined. If you want to refine this, this line here, you can play around with the angle here. I am a friend of refining everything to the same level. So I'm not using this feature angle too much. That's why um, this is also now a bit tricky for me. So Again, we had previously we had eight refinement iterations. We have seven, we have eight, we have nine, we have ten. And this is like if you have a bad case which uh, the, where the geomet geometry is doing some crazy feature angles, um, you can really run into a loop where only a few cells are getting refined and you're just wasting time and it's all almost 36 minutes which in, in, it's almost too too much so we you also see here surface refinement um, uh, iterations then we have here this shell refinement iterations and you see always determining uh, cells and it's selecting here 1100 cells for refinement here 172 then 130 then 36 then 4 and then done and we are not even ready so you see while now now it's really refining these um yeah these cells which are within this um angle it takes much longer and we create much more cells, so it is still not finished. So Snappy Hex Mesh is doing a, a lot of things. Splitting the mesh from the mesh we want to keep and the things we want to remove. Therefore, we introduce first baffles from the cells which are sharing the outer region and the inner region. And then we remove this, so we split these baffles and then we remove the other part so now we took almost 103 seconds and now we check again our mesh and now it should be uh, refined as I would like to have it look now everything got more refined as here the whole surface was within this um, angle only this part here at the top was not valid for the refinement and this is now um, enough for today the next time we still keep on castellating on the castellated part because I want to show you how you can use this named region STL because it allows you to have a, a lot of more options but this will be now um, end <laughs> I don't want to make a 40 minute video, but I hope you forgive me and that you get a lot of things out of it. Probably please leave a comment if it's too boring for you or too long, or maybe you all know everything and you just want to have like fine tuning things. Um, probably I'm talking too much about these keywords or talking too much in general. 
My name is Toby. Keep foaming, guys, and bye bye after a long time working on this fifth part. I hope that's the sixth and the following videos are not as time consuming as this one. Therefore, bye. Keep healthy in these fucking days of Corona. Um, yeah, and have fun with this training video.